Hello, um, I'm Mishka, and uh, this channel is called uh, Helsinki Renaissance. Now, uh, before I do any other kinds of videos, uh, perhaps I should address um, one thing. Uh, <clears throat> so, why am I even doing these videos in the first place? Well, uh, well we should um, backtrack quite a bit. So, uh, uh, when I was a teenager, uh, well, I mean, um, you know, my father is um, something like a, an old school film buff. So, you know, he certainly would have been the type to uh, go watch uh, Robert Bresson films at the uh, local cinematheque and, uh, you know, be um, uh, watching, uh, you know, John Ford uh, movies. Um, when they're on TV or, um, you know, he would have, um, well, I mean, there was just uh, always um, uh, classic films somewhere in the house. Um, so, um, you know, both of my parents, they are, you know, in one way or another, uh, sort of in the very fringes of uh, the art world, so that even though they aren't exactly artists as such, you know, uh, my mother, she uh, has been a photographer for a couple of books and uh, she has uh, written a couple of non-fiction books and so on. Uh, and, uh, you know, just has uh, had various jobs in media and then, uh, you know, uh, both of my parents, they are sort of uh, semi-artistically uh, inclined in one way or another. Uh, so um, it's just uh, sort of influenced me early on uh, that um, I too uh, initially uh, cared about cinema um, in some capacity or well not that's putting too mildly like uh, uh, I exclusively obsessed over everything cinema related for a while and um, um, you know, I just didn't really have anything else except caring about cinema. So that was like over a decade ago. And, um, um, you know, what happened was that, um, I initially thought of a career in cinema. I didn't think of any other kind of career as, uh, being at all interesting to me. So it's just like, you know, uh, Martin Scorsese or Quentin Tarantino, like they would have just had the kind of tunnel vision towards cinema. Like Tarantino would have said that, uh, like, uh, you know, forget about uh, being a film director, like he would have been fine just, you know, being a cashier or an usher at a film theater or like a, a clerk in a uh, film store or something. Like uh, he just... Uh, like he had no mind for anything other than movies and uh, you know lots of uh, uh, young film buffs have uh, similar predicaments not all are able to uh, uh, achieve their goals the way Tarantino for instance was uh, but anyway uh, you know for me uh, I initially had that kind of tunnel vision that lots of film buffs have so um, I just thought that um, you know, uh, it's cinema or nothing. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, that was the plan for a while, but then not all cultures are equally uh, sort of um, uh, cineast friendly. So, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, whether you live in Los Angeles or Uzbekistan or uh, you know, the outback of Australia or, uh, you know, uh, Sri Lanka. I mean, like, where you live greatly dictates how um, sort of uh, realistic uh, professions in cinema are. And, uh, you know, uh, here in Finland, uh, we have a somewhat uh, peculiar situation. Because uh, Finnish uh, cinema is not um, a great export commodity. So, that, uh, you know, there are some cultures such as, uh, well, let's say that uh, French and Italian 
and say American uh, movies, uh, they can raise some of the money by pre-selling international distribution rights. So that if the only way that uh, an American company can get the money to actually make the movie is if they pre-sell the release rights uh, beforehand. So that some uh, German or Russian or Scandinavian or Asian film distributor agrees to sort of uh, buy the rights sight and scene based on uh, you know the strength of the pitch or the track record of the professionals. But uh, you know with uh, Finnish movies that's not really very conceivable because uh, nobody thinks that Finnish directors have much of a track record uh, making uh, you know international moves so that nobody wants to buy the uh, international release rights before the film has been made. Uh, so Finnish filmmakers mostly have to do, they mostly have to work with the uh, local market. Now uh, Finland as a country uh, doesn't have that many more people than the metropolitan region of Atlanta, Georgia. So that to be um, to be a, a professional filmmaker working exclusively uh, for the Finnish audiences is a bit like being a filmmaker who releases a movie only in the metropolitan area of Atlanta. So, uh, you know, if, if just the five million people sort of vaguely around Atlanta, Georgia are your potential audience, it's very difficult to, because like uh, Atlanta doesn't give any kind of monopoly to Atlantan movies, so that you're still competing against the Hollywood releases, uh, or, you know, I mean, like, uh, you don't work in a vacuum, so like you are competing with every other kind of cultural product out there. So that the Finnish, uh, uh, the Finnish market is a, a very weak one. It shouldn't be able to sustain itself. Um, like uh, the economical side just doesn't make any sense. Because it actually takes a fair amount of money to make the movie. So that uh, ideally uh, a movie wouldn't cost that much to make and then when it's released it makes uh, so much profit that you can uh, finance the next movie out of those profits. But uh, you know with Finnish releases for the domestic market uh, the profits are so slim that you know, uh, you take the profits like a, a movie company, uh, like the profits are split between several groups. Like there's the theater chains, uh, there's the, uh, the theater chains, then depending on how many middlemen there are, there might be other people who want a portion of the uh, overall profit. But uh, let's say that, uh, you know, if there's just a production company, like a, a production company has the rights, but then there are some distributors who like take a cut and then the theater chains take a cut. And so like, uh, you know, only something like 40 or 50 percent in some cases uh, of, of the money that movies make go to the production company that uh, funded it. Uh, but uh, like, uh, you know, the, the numbers just don't really make sense so that, you know, usually what happens is that uh, a Finnish movie, you know, might make slightly more, uh, like it might make slightly more profit than what it costs to produce, but that profit is split like two or three ways. So that like in reality, like if you want to make any actual profit, like you got to pay the salaries of everyone who is you know, listed in the end credits and so on. So if you want to make any actual profit that could actually fund the next movie, you would uh, in reality ideally make three times as much money as it costs to produce it. So that when you, when you uh, triple the production cost and then after that, you know, you can have the 
uh, DVD sales and the TV rights sales and um, all of that stuff. So like, uh, you know, there's the marketing costs and there's uh, several, you know, uh, in the past there were print costs and so on, but, uh, you know, with digital video that's less. And, but like there are various costs that sort of make it make sense that uh, a film should make three times its production budget for anyone to start seeing product. Uh, uh, profit, sorry, and uh, you know, uh, Finnish movies, they just can't really, uh, like, uh, like if there was just one Finnish movie produced every year, maybe it could uh, sort of, uh, you know, like uh, the noveltiness of it could uh, may maybe make it profitable, but then if there's like uh, 30 Finnish movies, they are all sort of taking away audiences from themselves, so that the idea that they could conceivably triple their production budget uh, it just seems more and more uh, improbable. So that uh, from a financial standpoint, Finnish filmmaking would be absolutely impossible if the uh, Ministry of Culture didn't basically bail out Finnish production companies, all of which um, all of which would go bankrupt sooner or later without the state grants. So that, uh, you know, uh, basically you only need, like, um, if the marketplace is so harsh that basically, you know, um, you're, like, even if you have nothing but minor hits, that you basically everything is going right, you are still living a hand-to-mouth existence, and that you have one flop and then, you know, your company is bankrupt. Uh, so like uh, it, it's just it would be impossible to uh, run Finnish cinema without the Ministry of Culture basically uh, giving every production company enough money uh, so that uh, they can not uh, die with the next flop. So that uh, you know uh, Finnish cinema is in this kind of uh, strange hybrid situation. Where there is like on some level there's the kind of American capitalistic situation, but on some level it's as if there's like a socialist, you know, state-run situation. So like there's this kind of capitalist-socialist hybrid, maybe uh, you could say. And uh, now one of the ways in which this is actually a pretty unideal, like uh, the state tries to help, but what it does is that there's no longer any natural selection, as it were, to use somewhat Darwinistic language uh, with uh, uh, film production, is because uh, what happens is that since uh, the state bails out everyone who fails, uh, what happens is that uh, there are some filmmakers who uh, they, make, uh, uh, they make movies that don't have any uh, artistic worth and they also aren't like the kind of uh, 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 competent commercial place either. So we have this kind of uh, peculiar uh, situation where uh, like uh, um, uh, people like uh, in basically every other kind of culture zone, uh, like artists either have to have um, the movies have to have artistic merits or they have to have commercial merits. So you either have to be able to uh, win over hearts and minds with your artistry or you'll have to be able to make money to the people who uh, give you money to make your movie. But in Finland, because of our hybrid situation, that doesn't really happen. So that there are these directors who are, as it were, in the club. Uh, they have, uh, you know, like a... Um, the state uh, just has taken them uh, under their wings into the system and the state doesn't let uh, Finnish production companies to go under. Uh, so uh, what's happening is that uh, like some people who cannot win over any hearts and minds with the artistry and they cannot make any money, they still have a career because they are in the system. And now what this does is that because uh, some people aren't allowed to fail, uh, what this means is, is that there is never any kind of vacuum to which younger artists can step into. 
so that uh, you know if production companies gamble with one director uh, he uh, is proven time and time again that he can make neither money or artistic work so that uh, um, you know uh, since uh, uh, those older directors, we can't get rid of them, as it were, through natural means. They are artificially, like, kept on life support because of the state grants. Uh, younger directors cannot have any kind of prayer of getting commissions because the older hacks, uh, because of how the system is designed, the older hacks, uh, they keep getting commissions because they're the only ones with a track record. Like, uh... A production company has no need to gamble with young, unproven talent because, uh, like, that's such a question mark. You don't know what you're gonna get. But with the kind of hack, you can at least maintain the status quo where, you know, at least you live to fight another day uh, because, like, you know, the state keeps bailing you out. Uh, so, you know, like, uh, I looked at this situation and I uh, came to the kind of conclusion uh, that, uh, you know, I could go to a Finnish film school and uh, graduate from there and then with that diploma I could go about uh, trying to get into the club. But uh, what's happening is that, uh, you know, every year the Finnish film schools keep pumping out, uh, you know, uh, a new class of would-be directors and every year uh, those directors are graduating to be becoming unemployable because like if uh, Finnish uh, cinema makes something like uh, from 20 to 40 feature films a year uh, we already have uh, the old hack directors for those 20 or 40 feature films a year so every year uh, film schools just keep uh, having these people graduate to becoming unemployable like every year the group of the uh, young directors uh, just keeps getting bigger and bigger and like uh, there's no way that there's commissions for everybody so like the internal competition would just mean that it's you know virtually inconceivable that any production company would take a gamble on an unproven young talent. So this kind of vicious circle emerges that, uh, you know, the old people, uh, because they've gotten commissions in the past, they keep getting commissions because at least they have a track record. And then the young people, because they've never been hired, uh, they can't get hired because they don't have the track record. So that, uh, you know, like the older hacks, they keep failing upwards because the system is rigged so that uh, there's nothing that they can do uh, to, you know, get kicked out of it. And that, uh, you know, the younger directors, like, uh, there just is not an opening. Now, some people would uh, have the kind of attitude that... Uh, Oh, well, you know, uh, why not become an assistant director? Or why not start as a screenwriter or something and, you know, get your uh, foot through the door uh, that way? So, uh, uh, you know, you could do that. But then again, that's like thinking that, uh, you know, in the military, you'll start as a sergeant and then you'll rise up gradually into becoming a general. But anyone who knows anything about the military knows that that isn't going to happen. If you start as a sergeant, there's every likelihood that you'll always be a sergeant. Like, they'll train you to be a sergeant, and since you've gotten the sergeant's training, they don't want you to go to a position where you don't have the training. So, like, uh, you know, if you were ever going to become a general, like, if you can't get to the cadet school, and then, you know, through that, uh, uh, if you can't take the... Um, proper route of a general, you can't just, you know, like, uh, rise from just every position. Just like, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, there's just no guaranteed roles for directors right now. Like, an assistant director might become uh, a director, but then again, like, uh, if those young people aren't getting hired right now, uh, and, uh, 
since our domestic market isn't showing any kind of signs of uh, you know becoming uh, uh, a stronger uh, marketplace I mean on the contrary every year cinema becomes less and less powerful uh, so that uh, uh, there's just no reason to suppose that uh, if you become an assistant director uh, that uh, you know anyone's gonna take a gamble on you because uh, uh, given the state bailouts this is this is almost no point in gambling like uh, you know uh, you know this kind of uh, casino economy you make some bets and if you win you'll keep the money if you lose you'll send the check to the government as it were uh, so uh, you know it, it's uh, uh, it's not the kind of situation where uh, uh, the things are stacked in the young director's favor. So I simply drew the conclusions when I was, uh, you know, after I had gotten uh, from my national service, uh, I looked, I took a long look at Finnish cinema and uh, I seriously considered that, uh, you know, if I would try to make it as a screenwriter, uh, I think that there would be uh, a way into becoming a director if I just earned my stripes as a, as a screenwriter first. I mean, I also considered becoming a film critic and so on. But uh, then I just decided that there's just something so uh, mindless about the culture of Finnish cinema that I just decided that, you know, like uh, I can earn my stripes elsewhere, like I don't need Finnish cinema. Uh, to uh, help me reach my uh, dreams. So, uh, you know, when I was like uh, around 20, I just decided that, uh, fuck it, like uh, I can do something else besides cinema. So, uh, I just made the semi-reckless decision one day that uh, I'd rather become a poet um, or uh, a novelist. And uh, I just, like, I don't know how, but like uh, I'd rather, um, uh, or I can't remember at what year it was, but like uh, uh, definitely it looked like it would be absolutely hopeless trying to fight the current with Finnish cinema. And uh, I just, uh, uh, you know, I just gradually, you know, the idea formed that uh, maybe I should try and be a poet. And my thinking was that, uh, with uh, poetry, for instance, um, you know, nobody in Finnish poetry is making any kind of money, but there isn't the kind of uh, uh, outrageous uh, disparity between the amount of people who want to become poets and the amount of people who want who can become poets. So, like, with young directors, there, there's, like, so exponentially more wannabe directors than actual directors. You know, with poets, I mean, the... Like, uh, it's a relatively cheap to produce volumes of poetry. Like, uh, you know, pa paper isn't that expensive. Like, uh, you know, people are sending commercials through your mailbox every day. So, like, those are printed on paper. And, like, those are pa papers that are so cheap to produce that uh, you can essentially just keep throwing them away, as it were. So, like... Uh, uh, you know, publishers of Finnish poetry, they aren't, making any, they aren't making any notable money, but they also aren't losing notable money, because publishing a volume of poetry isn't such a huge investment. And uh, I just uh, somewhat naively thought that, uh, uh, you know, because the situation isn't uh, rigged against young poets in any notable manner, I just thought that I could... Uh, get um, into the, um, you know, professional artist sphere through that. Uh, now, what I didn't foresee uh, when I made the decision is that, uh, you know, um, for instance, if you're a rookie athlete, uh, there are scouts who evaluate you. And now if those scouts should be in the wrong, and if they give you a negative scouting report, 
there isn't really anything you can do about it. Like, uh, if for whatever reason, you know, uh, incompetent scouts are the ones who are evaluating you, you can have a negative scouting report and then it can cost you uh, your chance of uh, getting a, uh, getting drafted because, uh, you know, uh, in some situation through to no fault of your own, you just uh, couldn't uh, attract uh, the right evaluators who could have uh, uh, given you what you deserve. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, it just became very much apparent that, uh, um, you know, um, if there's something rotten in the state of Finnish cinema, I mean, it's sort of immediately apparent to everyone. Uh, but, uh, you know, with Finnish publishing uh, industry, it just, uh, it just uh, occurred to me, uh, as I had some uh, relation uh, with them, uh, that uh, uh, basically what the publishing world wants is that uh, there have been uh, successful publications in recent times, and uh, they essentially want you to more or less copy paste somebody's winning formula so that uh, if Twilight and Hunger Games books have become publishing phenomena, what they would like is for you to do something that's like not necessarily like too blatant a ripoff but basically that you just consciously lift that kind of formula and then you know you just do a variation on a theme uh, and, uh, you know, this kind of uh, insane hack-like attitude that has permeated everything to do with the publishing world, where basically original ideas are penalized and, uh, you know, uh, uh, stealing is rewarded and, you know, a complete lack of originality. Uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, the more shallow the scope uh, that you have, uh, the more... Uh, you are seen as, uh, you know, um, um, the right sort as far as the publishing world goes. Uh, so that uh, the complete creative bankruptcy of the publishing world somewhat uh, took me by surprise. Like, I, I, I just, uh, as I said, I had a completely naive faith that because poetry might on some level be seen as high art rather than pop culture that uh, perhaps it had attracted like uh, actually artistic people in its ranks but uh, no this is the, the same kind of uh, uh, you know semi-competent hacks who are running things in Finnish cinema they are also running things in, uh, in the other uh, 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 culture so in, in Finland, so, uh, uh, you know, I am, as it were, uh, the kind of uh, rookie who has gotten exclusively negative scouting reports. Now, uh, if you are listening to me talking about it, uh, you might have the kind of idea, well, Mishka, how do you know that the negative scouting reports that you've received have been unfair? Uh, now, I'd just like to uh, make one thing clear. I'm not the kind of uh, um, artist who, um, as it were, has a high-handed attitude towards the commercial realities of the uh, field, as you should be able to gather in, uh, from uh, how I explained the realities of uh, Finnish filmmaking. So uh, I actually uh, both uh, respect uh, the act of uh, returning uh, the money to the investors and not only that, uh, you know, uh, I've been uh, lacking in money for a long time. I don't particularly like lacking in money so that uh, 
uh, I would just have a personal interest in uh, using work to make money. So that, uh, you know, the uh, state of being an amateur poet, it doesn't seem to me at all like a winning formula. So, uh, you know, just saying that uh, I would be one of the few people uh, who don't want to just win over hearts and minds through artistry, but I would also have an interest in making the product a financially viable investment. So, like, uh, just saying that uh, uh, if I am right about this, there shouldn't be any legitimate reason to turn down a manuscript for me, from me, because if you are in the interest of advancing arts and if you are in the interest of uh, uh, making money, uh, we share these two interests, me and a hypothetical publisher, so that there isn't any kind of situation that we'd be going at different directions. Uh, now, uh, it's just that uh, some publishers might have judged my material as either incapable of making money or either incapable of uh, uh, being an, uh, you know, uh, aesthetic triumph. So, I since uh, uh, letters of refusal are just sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, general jargon, they actually don't really uh, give you the reason why they turn you down. They simply inform you that you have been turned down. Uh, so, I don't know whether they thought that I was lacking in commercial value or was lacking in uh, uh, aesthetic values, uh, but uh, I just uh, uh, question that uh, the kind of poets who uh, were getting the approval, what kind of commercial value have they been able to materialize for those companies? Like, uh, with what poets have they been uh, you know, uh, be making successful investments with, uh, you know, the answers uh, with absolutely no one. And then the second question is, well, of the other poets, what kind of artistic triumphs have uh, emerged from the field of Finnish poetry? And uh, I'd say that uh, it has been fairly slim pickings. So I'm just saying that it's not as if the, uh, uh, the other people who have gotten into the club through Finnish poetry. It's not as if they are setting the bar that high. So then, uh, uh, if the bar is set fairly low, uh, you know, can I have been so very awful that it was perfectly unequivocally legitimate to turn me down? Well, uh, you know, uh, I obviously cannot uh, um, see that, uh, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, objectively true that I would have been uh, good enough, but uh, I think that the, the situation is certainly not looking quite as bad from where I'm standing as uh, what the uh, publishers might think. And so, uh, there's the problem that, uh, you know, uh, when there are disagreements of this nature, Usually, the only way to solve them is through having an in independent arbitration uh, to come between uh, this kind of uh, situation where one party says one thing, another party says another thing. So, uh, you know, only an independent arbitration could, uh, you know, take an objective look at the situation and then see who was right. And now, I'm extremely confident that if I could get independent arbitration, uh, which could only come from uh, other, uh, from professionals of poetry from some other culture zone, such as if some people involved in like, uh, you know, the British publishing houses who are doing poetry, uh, you know, if, if just one of them uh, could, uh, Take a look at the situation. I'm sure that uh, uh, the judgment would be greatly in my favor and not against me. So uh, I'm extremely confident that uh, there's just no way that I have lesser talent than anyone else who has ever written poetry in Finland. So uh, uh, regardless of what you think, 
uh, I just uh, find my position the strong one here and uh, I just think that it's only a matter of time till uh, um, well as they say history will prove me right and uh, the other people are wrong but uh, if uh, then we come uh, full circle as it were uh, to where we are now and uh, there are these videos for this channel now uh, you know uh, Originally, I started doing videos uh, because, well, um, I was sending my manuscripts to the publishers and, uh, uh, you know, they take so long to reply that, um, uh, well, I just needed something to do uh, because I didn't want to be that person just, you know, hitting refresh on uh, on the mailbox. Uh, so, uh, uh, I just thought that I had so many uh, literary projects that I didn't want to uh, do anything there. Uh, I didn't want to take yet another literary project. Um, so, uh, I just... Like, uh, there was one other uh, situation that uh, uh, sort of uh, pushed me towards making this video, but I don't want to talk about that. So, like, there was a bigger reason for me to do these videos. Uh, but uh, now that uh, in this uh, uh, version of the channel that I'm doing, which I uh, decided to call the Helsinki Renaissance, uh, now... Um, you know, there wasn't any particular reason for me to start talking about, say, uh, uh, well, I mean, there was no other reason for me to start doing videos about certain philosophers or certain filmmakers or, you know, to do that learn Finnish little by little videos. Um, I just did them because I just, I needed to start tinkering with some project as uh, those, uh, manuscripts of mine keep getting the red light so uh, uh, you know the videos of this channel basically exist because uh, you know this is all that I can get published uh, straight away now uh, obviously those other projects uh, uh, on some level should be a lot higher a priority for me than what the videos of this channel are but uh, because uh, there's a collective effort into becoming a published author and uh, you know, as I said uh, uh, I have a couple of published authors in my family like uh, they've done non-fiction rather than fiction but uh, just saying that it's not as if it's the most exclusive club out there like uh, you know uh, I have some relatives uh, there they were able to get in, uh, you know, my talent isn't lesser, uh, so uh, I'm very confident that I'll be able to get in uh, sooner than later as well. But uh, then, uh, is it that I do nothing artistic or culturally inclined as I wait for that to happen, or do I do these videos? And I've decided to do these videos, um, and, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, there's a certain kind of uh, off-the-cuff uh, uh, manner to which uh, I do this and um, uh, you know it's it's just something that sort of fits into uh, my my life presently uh, so like uh, because I am uh, I just, I don't really have anything else going for me right now. So I have to keep doing this. But then if uh, you as an audience member, if you should for whatever reason like what I've been putting in this channel, you might wish that uh, I did, uh, you know, some insert thing more and uh, did another insert thing uh, less. Uh, and, uh, you know, suddenly it's... Uh, completely fair for you to have the uh, preferences towards this content that you happen to have. Um, I, I don't want to speak against that, uh, but uh, uh, surely if you look at my overall uh, situation uh, in my life, 
uh, I'm certainly not where I want to be and uh, I don't wish to prolong this situation any more than is absolutely necessary. So uh, basically uh, these videos happening with me being a one-man band um, uh, I don't want to do any more of this than I absolutely have to. Like uh, the first chance that I have to, you know, uh, not do this, I'll take now like, uh, you know, some collaboration type thing, things uh, like, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but uh, you know, just saying that uh, uh, this thing here, it was always meant as just like a temporary solution. I only started doing uh, these types of videos for this channel uh, just because I had to do something, uh, you know, whilst the, the publishers took their, uh, uh, took their time uh, replying. Um, you know, I... Uh, I still have to, uh, uh, I mean, this whole situation, it has become a bit like, uh, you know, the uh, Greek forces in Iliad uh, besieging the uh, uh, town of uh, Ilium, or Troy, as we call it, and, uh, you know, uh, they just needed uh, uh, they just needed the uh, wily Odysseus to uh, come up with uh, just the right uh, ploy of uh, getting in. And, uh, you know, I do think that I have uh, some of the more uh, foxy qualities of Odysseus. Uh, so, um, you know, I should be able to uh, uh, find the opening uh, uh, sooner or later. I actually already found uh, one situation that will be like a lightning in the bottle. Uh, you know, I was able to catch it and uh, I'm not letting go. Uh, unfortunately, that situation, it requires some extreme finesse abilities because there's like, uh, like there's some variables to the situation and uh, like, uh, mm, I mean, I, sh I should be uh, able to use that uh, to get over, mm, but uh, it's, um, everything's made slightly, uh, um, you know, there isn't a lot of solid ground uh, in this path forward, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just something that, uh, a foxy soul, such as Odysseus, uh, should be able to use. But anyway, like, I could talk longer for the kind of, uh, you know, years of wandering that uh, have happened here, but uh, I don't feel like uh, going on more in this video. It's just, I just wanted to address the sort of main nature of this channel, in that, uh, you know, uh, it's just, um, uh, I just, um, I don't see this as, like, uh, the main contribution that I should be making, but uh, I'm just being kept away from uh, the other fields. So, uh, you know, we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, but uh, anyway, I sincerely thank everyone who would take uh, an interest in these, uh, I think that there's a lot more that I can offer if I just get a chance to not be a one-man band but to get some, um, well, uh, bandmates, as it were. And, uh, you know, it's like, uh, it's just sort of uh, difficult uh, to do everything by myself. I mean, it, it's time-consuming, energy-consuming, and then, like, uh, just, you know, skills-wise, not everyone can do absolutely everything. So, like, uh, it just opens more possibilities the more 
uh, able-bodied people there are in a situation. Uh, but, uh, well, like this channel is me as a one-man band, uh, like uh, it will um, have some content, but, uh, you know, hopefully uh, I'll be able to uh, cross over uh, sooner or later. Uh, but anyway, I just felt like uh, these things sort of needed to be addressed. So uh, I'll do videos as long as I don't have anything else. And then um, after that, we'll see what happens. Uh, but, uh, you know, just a slight, uh, you know, uh, explanation for why I, uh, why I do this. Uh, so uh, anyway, if you made it this far, I thank you for watching. If you'll watch the other videos, I'll thank you for watching as well. But uh, it's time for me to go now. So anyway, uh, this was Mishka. Uh, I can't remember what the date is. Uh, but uh, April 2017. So, uh, you know, I'm still here, but hopefully not for very much longer. Uh, so, you know, uh, I remember reading in an old Martin Scorsese interview that uh, he was asked uh, uh, what his childhood dream was. And, Mar you know, just to go full circle, Marty actually didn't say to become a film director. What his childhood dream was was to uh, to get out of here. So he just wanted to leave uh, his, uh, you know, uh, the neighborhood where he grew up in and, uh, you know, just to get somewhere anywhere. I mean, I just, uh, I just, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, my uh, love for all things courses in more than doubled uh, when I read that because you know, it was sort of my dream as well, like uh, my one plan, uh, you know, not not just to, like, uh, you know, being a film director would be secondary, but just to get out of here. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just so resonated with me. Anyway, uh, you know, that's also the answer that sort of unlocks everything uh, to do with the the motivation behind my actions that, uh, you know, everything that I've done, it's just uh, uh, with the with the hope of just getting out of here uh, to somewhere else. So, uh, you know, uh, just uh, I, I just felt like explaining a couple of things. But uh, anyway, uh, now I'll just have to go and uh,